morning. Welcome to the first talk of this critical software summit. So um, I'm Nicole. Um, for those who don't know me, um, I have some software background, started doing functional safety work about 15, 13, whatever years ago. I'm old, officially. Um, my, let's say, professional open source career, I started in the Open Chain project and then I somehow met Kate and just as things evolved, the Elisa started, we came up with, uh, we should might maybe uh, use SPDX for safety, the Setup project came around the corner, so yeah, that's more or less me. If you want to reach me or at uh, GitHub uh, or some uh, yeah, Discord, any kind of social media that I'm on, I'm with the handle Nick Pupler, so just feel free to reach out if you'd like to. So about what I'm talking today is, yeah, what's the issue anyway with functional safety and traceability and why do I think we should care a little bit more about it? Um, what do we usually do in functional safety and how could an SPDX safety model help with that? So I'd like to start with some history about safety. <coughs> so that's how we started, right? We had mechanical safety. It was nuts and bolts and sheets of metal and we were relying on the um, safe construction. We were relying on the materials and everything was, that everything was right and durable and putting our life on the mechanics. So actually in mechanics, everything is standardized. That's why we can <laughs> Uh, record one. So the, I g g still have this one. I started to work in 1999. That's when I got this book. It's easy to uh, look up stuff. So if you just want a screw or something, it's easy to identify, right? And it's easy to identify everything that you need with it. So, oops, sorry. Within this little book, you find um, the torque you need uh, to, to assemble it, the max, you uh, find information about the tensile strengths of different materials and you really can easily identify what you need and what you have. And uh, even usually when you go then into your bill of materials, so that's nothing new for software that was there as long as we have construction, you have the lot, you can identify everything back to where it's manufactured. If something went wrong in the manufacturing process, you know where you have put the stuff. So, and easily, you can really easily identify stuff. So, um, I went to um, the DIY store. Um, I could identify what I was looking for. I had the boxes with the lot numbers, with the sizes, with the materials. I could verify uh, if this is really what I wanted with this little tool they had in the shop or then at home I have this little stuff here. So it's, it's really easy to, to verify that you have what you want and to verify when you uh, pick it up that it is what you want and what you need and really t to um, trace back where it's coming from. And so the question I really like to ask you is when you put your life on something, would you put your life on something that's traceable, that has def defined properties, that is really exactly what you need? Or would you uh, put your uh, life on some random thing you found on the internet? So that's really the question I'd like to ask you. So today, we, don't, we have a little bit more modern trains or modern applications. We're putting our lives not only on mechanical safety, we have environmental safety, uh, we have electrical safety, we have cyber security, and we have functional safety. And, oops, that was the wrong direction. In real life, that's not, the mechanics and the elec electrical safety, that's something that we know and that we follow. But now we have thousands of components, we have billions of lines of code, and that's really where we put our lives on. We're, not, we're putting our lives on mechanics and all that, but mainly the issue now is we have lots and lots of software in there. So um, fun uh, looking into specifically functional safety, I think that's maybe new for some, but not for most. So functional safety just for the completeness 
it's um, the, the part of the safety that relies on a system behaving like uh, expected or like specified and to have a defined reaction even in case of an error or a fault. So, disclaimer, safety is a system property. So it's, the safety is in the complete train. It's not just in this bolt or in the screw, but in the end, if this fails, the whole system fails. So this is the same way why we look at software components too. We don't only look at complete applications, we look at the, the components because if the component fails, the system fails. And uh, especially with software, we're looking into something called systematic capability. That means in the end that as the screw has been manufactured as you want it to, also the software needs to have evidence that it's manufactured as you wanted it to be. So in the end, it, this uh, ends up in standards like the standards that we had in my little book, like with tensor strength and dimensions and all that. It's the same with everything else. You have standards that tell you what to do to hopefully get things right. You need to keep your evidences then up to date that you did that stuff and you need to do this over each iteration of your system. In the end, it comes down to a lot of documentation. On the one hand side, you have the safe system, but on the other hand side, you produce a lot of documents. <coughs> and um, no surprise, these documents are in relation uh, to each other. You have, um, in safety, we still work with the V model. Uh, what I really like to tell people here, please don't see this as a sequence <coughs> model. See this as a knowledge model. This is stuff of information, pieces of information that belong together. Plans and strategies that tell you how you plan or you intend to do things that help people on board, that help people initiate changes. And you have the documents that uh, show what is already there that help you to dig in and see where do you want to make a change or what is this thing doing at all? You have the evidences that this stuff has been tested, that there were tests and verification measures and whatever on analyzes that this thing behaves as intended. So you have all this bunch of information and here's wh where the issue comes in with functional safety these days with software. So you have a lot of documents. These documents live in their own system. So you have some PDF documents or maybe even Excel or Word or whatever uh, crazy thing you're using somewhere on an SVN <laughs> or on a SharePoint or just on a random server where you um, really just do configuration management by naming the documents differently. You have your lifecycle management systems, your big ones where you have your requirements and maybe some test specification, but maybe the tests are already in a different system and you're really struggling to keep all this in relation to each other, you're re really struggling to keep stuff uh, consistent and up to date. And so any guess as what's the number one safety case documentation tool is these days? Yeah, no surprise. And usually it comes with a really funny name. <laughs> so uh, it's, you're not sure if this is really what you wanted to have it's in draft and final state at the same time. You will open it and it will head inside a different version number than it has on the outside. And you really, when you start digging in and you start to look for your information, you will find inconsistencies in your delivery and in this list. And that's just the nature of things. We are not made to maintain manually thousands of documents in an Excel list. That's not what we're made for. So, why should we need SPDX for that? Uh, that's just this, uh, the definition I took uh, from the wiki at GitHub about SPDX. And in, if you look into the blue part, there's a lot of stuff that we want to have in functional safety. It will help us a lot, you know, just by, oh, there might be something that we might want to reuse. And this is how it could look as a, uh, at, this was the first idea that we then came up to uh, pick up people hey, we can take this SPDX relationship and put the, that on our V knowledge model. And it looks pretty nice, isn't it? And there's nothing that we came up with that we say we need to now 
invent a lot of new stuff, so we're working on the specifics currently, but there's 99% is already there, so it's, n it's not just something that's in our head. So we have the model, we have uh, enums on how to structure the data in the model, so everything is there. And if we look into a real life um, pro project we're currently on, is so each kind of documentation, it comes with some relationship to each other, you can describe it. And if you then really walk through the stuff in more detail, you see you can really connect everything with, um, within this chain. And in case you find an issue, you really can walk back, can really see where's the issue, where does this come from, what's this related to. It's not always the code that's the issue, right? The code performs as it's coded. The code is never wrong, but maybe one step before was the issue. So you can really walk back using these relationships and you don't need to start with your Excel list and then dig in where is the documentation, oh, um, what, uh, what uh, code uh, baseline belongs to this, what belongs to that, where's my test evidence. So you can really use these relationships to automate stuff. And the idea behind this also is to create information when it's available. So documenting stuff once you're done or asking um, within your supply chain to get documents after you have decided you want to use something and then people start to re-document or you try to document something from like you're looking at it at a black box. Doesn't make so, uh, so much sense. So documenting stuff uh, when the information is available in the project with using stuff that we already have and creating an S form once, for example, you uh, have all the planning and the design of your system in place. So when you're just starting <coughs> or having an S form about all the sources that you provide or uh, handling down the build S form to somebody who wants to deploy it. So th there's a lot of stuff already there that we can reuse to document all our safety documentation. And yeah, really to, to have a specific uh, S bomb the mom for the moment of our life cycle that we need it. So that's our ultimate goal at the moment, really to say, okay, remove that Excel weakness and go to a life cycle model where we have our safety profile, where we have everything automated, where people can know where to find stuff, where people can for, uh, generate stuff more or less with le painless or with l lots of uh, less pain than maintaining an Excel list. So, uh, yeah, so, oh, it was fast, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so the conclusion really is that once we have this in place, we can um, do our impact analysis and do all our analysis more or less with the, using that model. We don't need to bring in people that already moved on three projects um, to do an uh, analysis, to have people, um, let's say knowledge based on people, that's nice. And, um, but in the end, it's not, not reproducible to always try to get the right person, to contact this person, to get these people back in the room. Um, if you start a process in this week and you start this process three weeks later, you will have a different um, outcome. If you have everything based on a model, if you have everything automated, it will be hopefully always the same result. So this is our ultimate goal. And yeah, the details are currently in work. So if you'd like to contribute to that, uh, we have a meeting each Friday at uh, 6 p.m. Central European time, so mornings for the US people, sorry for the Asian people. And yeah, our meeting minutes are on GitHub. So that's more or less it. <laughs> Thank you. And questions? Uh, 
um, there is no full tooling yet. So on the one hand side, we're currently still working on the um, on the model. On the other hand side, there are tools that already start implementing it. So if you look over your right shoulder and talk to Luigi, you might know more. <laughs> More questions? Uh, I think in the back was before you, Philip. Um, we are interested now from the Sapphire project's point of view, and the, yeah, I don't want to call out at the moment um, companies. So if you want to see who is contributing, show up on the Friday meeting. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. Uh, we don't have we don't have that yet. So yeah, we're working on the model, and we ha we had some proof of concepts, I think a year ago, but that now look completely different. I'm now really confused. <laughs> uh, yeah, I see, uh, this one? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually don't know if there is a specified connection. Um, it's specified what g what these uh, S-bombs mean. Um, the oh, we have these relationships, yeah. yeah. That, could, that, that would work, yeah. So you could uh, have at least the contains relationship between, uh, for example, a build S-bomb that contains the content of the source S-bomb. There was somebody in the back, and then maybe you, and then to Philip. something outside of the model because each project, each company, they have their own needs and their own idea about configuration management, but tracking what's inside of configuration management and then to the application of it. Like you have this configuration management plan that has one item that says you need to do a regular configuration uh, audit and then you can connect this to the evidence of the audit and say, yeah, our project defines we need to do this and we have evidence that we do this and you connect this. Uh, Philip, you also. Exactly. It's a screw that is suitable for the safety application and 
I have something more if this question comes up. So you know, it's it's a safety, it's a system property, and this nut, it can be really loose, you know. And do you like loose nuts in your safe application? So it could be. Oops, didn't think that takes so long. And you might want to have a self. Uh, what what's the English term for this? A self-fixing nut, so that's with a little rubber band inside. That really. Once you have it on, so I can't even move it properly by hand, so that's really then. So maybe the system property is that this needs to be f really ha um, hardly fixed together, and that's another piece of information that you want to track, right? That you have not only your screw that is has the, um, the properties that you want, but you also have the uh, right thing to combine it with to get a, a safe system. So... And currently, you know, at a, at a mechanics uh, bill of material, that's pretty clear. And you know then you need a special tool to uh, assemble this. You have a maximum torque and a minimum torque, how you um, oops, screw things together. And yeah, you, you shouldn't drop it. <laughs> Thank you. So maybe now it's already, you know, impair, the safety might be impaired by the, of that. So I don't know. So, yeah, it's, it's one component that needs to come with some properties. So people who manufacture that stuff, they don't know where it's going to. They just know it needs the size, it needs this material strength. It even comes with some accessories here. And what, what, do you, what do you make with it for your safe system? That's up to you. You need to know what to add to it to really uh, to get a safe system, and how to verify that it's what you want in the end. So there is a group also working on a hardware model for SPDX. So, because yeah, in the end we need to describe this complete system, right? So, yeah. Um, generally, they should care because even for your normal quality application, when you look at it two years later, you want to know what you have in inside. So you might not want to have all these nitty gritty details about test coverage or several layers of architecture, but you want to have a, a traceable overview of what you had back then and what you want to have in the future. And for if we talk about cybersecurity, it's a it's a must. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Also, for the upcoming regulations, it's um, it's a need to look more into that, and you might want to establish a way where you don't need to force your people keeping an Excel list because that's just a pain and it does not work. You will have your developers just run away and look for some new startup that just pretends they don't need it and they will need it in two years' time and then the people look for something else. So, I think we still have a few minutes. If there are questions or additions, yeah. Reusability is more or less easy then because it's you, you, do, you know when if you talk about reusability in of requirements in existing systems, so you make a co manual copy <laughs> and you try then to manually establish all your links again, 
and then you do your changes and maybe you export stuff in between and you need to import it somewhere and you need to do manual changes in between and you have uh, each, you know, each export and import, it's, it's an uncontrolled copy of stuff. And the moment you are using something like SPDX, which is, it's a standard, it's independent of tools, it's independent of having a back end, having a license for something speci specific. So you really can use the evidence that you generate here and the traceability that you generate here very independently of the underlying tooling that you use to uh, keep stuff maintainable and yeah, sustainable and to see the evolutions of your stuff. is Luigi, right? Are you the next one? Who's the next one? Really? I thought I had half an hour. No, yeah, we can't start now, I think. I thought I had half an hour, so 